Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial of this course. In this video, we will make the player run endlessly. We would have to write a few lines of code. Which would be really easy for everyone even if someone has no coding knowledge. So, first of all, I am going to briefly tell you what is coding or programming. Coding or programming is commands. If you want to tell something to the computer, how do you tell? Like, hey computer, run the player forever, unless I command you to stop it. Yes, you have to tell the computer what you want to do. It's that simple. Although, the computer wouldn't understand the English directly. We have to follow some rules to make a command which is not hard. I will teach you as easily as possible. First, we will create a folder called scripts. Then we will create our very first script. This is C-sharp script. C-sharp is a programming language that Unity uses to make games. We would have to follow C-sharp language rules while writing codes. So, the script name would be player controller. Now, I am going to double click to open it in Visual Studio Community. After opening the Visual Studio, we can see some codes by default. Now, here you can see void start and void update. Both of them are function. If we write any codes inside the void start function, that will be executed as soon as the game starts. And if we write any codes inside the update function, that will be executed once per frame. It means, if the game runs 60 frame per second then all the codes written inside this function will be executed 60 times in every second. Now, we will create a rigid body type variable called rb2d. Now, I am going to tell what is variable. Variable is a thing that can store something. Like, this is a rigid body 2D type variable, so it can store a rigid body 2D component. We will need to access the rigid body 2D component from the player game object. We've already added a rigid body 2D component to the player in the previous video, so now we can access it from the player using this variable. We want to get the rigid body when the game starts, so we will write codes inside the start function. First, we will write the variable name which is rb2d. Then after an equal sign, we will write get component rigid body 2d. Don't forget to type the semicolon to complete the line. There you can see two arrow sign and brackets. They are a part of rules as we are coding in C sharp programming language. You don't have to memorize those things, by the way. However, just by this line of code, we have got the rigid body 2D component. Now we would be able to use this component to run the player. We will do this inside the update function, as the update function will be running forever. However, we will make the player run by updating the player position at the front side. We will first write transform.position. This means the player position, because, we will attach the script to the player within a minute. However, we will now change the transform.positions value. Here we will first write the running direction. In this case, we want the player to run at the right side. So, we will write vector 3.right and then we will multiply this with the running speed of the player. Running speed can be variable. So, we will create an int type variable called run speed. Int variable means we can store only integer numbers inside the variable. Now, 
we will make this variable public. Public variable means we would be able to access this variable from another script, and this variable will be visible inside the inspector so that we can change the value from the inspector without changing any code. However, after multiplying the run speed, we will multiply with time.delta time. Time.delta time means the interval between two frames. For example, if the game runs 60 frames per second, then the time.delta time value will be 0.02. We have multiplied with time.delta time because, multiplying with time.delta time will keep the running animation smooth according to the device performance. Now, since we want to make the player run, so we will add the current position of the player. Otherwise the player will not move. So, we will type plus transform dot position. This will keep the player stay in its new position. Finally, we will save the script. Now, I am going back to the Unity editor. Now we will select the player. Then we will click on add component and then search for the script name which is player controller and add it. So, we have just attached the script to our player. Now, as I said earlier that I would be able to set the run speed value from the inspector, here you can see that. I am going to set the value for. Now, we will change the player position right in place. We will now play the game and see if the player runs. So, it's working perfectly and I will see you in the next video.